Hey Geeks, I'm Trey Guillotine and welcome to my channel. You're watching Weekly Marvels where I give a few thoughts about some of the news going on in this week in the Marvel Universe. Some opinions are going around if loss in the MCU really means something. Tom Holland reveals another Marvel secret. John Bernthal gives an interview on being the Punisher. And we're getting our first look at the Avengers Infinity War trailer. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and share it around so others can join in the conversation. But let's get started on these weekly Marvels. article recently that was talking about the idea of loss in the MCU. They were specifically kind of taking the idea that Thor was getting his eye back in Avengers Infinity War and using that as a jumping off point to talk about just the, the rest of the idea of loss in the MCU and if it doesn't really matter, if no one really loses anything, if they're going to lose something, that they're just going to get it right back. The article did go on to clarify that after the publishing of this article, they did discover that Thor is actually not getting his eye back in Infinity War, so that some of their speculation was a little off, but they still felt the same way about the general idea of loss. And I really have to say that I disagree. I think permanent loss has been a huge element for these characters. Just looking at the original Avengers, there's plenty of permanent loss that still pushes them to this day. Steve Rogers not only lost Peggy Carter twice, once when he went to the ice and a second time when she did finally die in her old age, but he also lost his entire world as he knew it. He went into the ice in what, 1945 and didn't wake up until like 2010. And even though he got his best friend Bucky back, Bucky is so different because of Hydra and the events surrounding them. So everything he knew, everything he, everything he grew up knowing is completely gone for him. Tony Stark Iron Man has gone through so many traumatic events from throwing the missile into the wormhole in Avengers to being the original Avenger to kind of jumpstart this entire endeavor. He's gone through so much traumatic that at this point he's suffering from PTSD and he's been changed at a fundamental level. That change, that it's a great character development where he, was, where he started as just kind of the playboy Tony Stark and now he's a little bit, he's not even a little bit, he's a lot more responsible. He's still snarky and sarcastic and Tony Stark, but he he's learned his lessons and he's grown as a character because of the things he's experienced. And even Rhodes, right next to him, has gone through so many changes, especially in Civil War, where his spine was literally broken. He will likely never walk again without any kind of assistance. But even that, even with assistance, he will never walk around. He will, he will never move and walk around as he once did. And then just from Thor Ragnarok, Thor didn't just lose his eye. Yeah, he lost his eye and now he's wearing this kick-ass eye patch. But he also lost his entire home planet. He lost his entire home planet, he lost his father, and all of the people of Asgard are now drifting in space without a home. I mean, I, that's a significant loss, but more so than just losing his eye. And then right next to Thor, Hulk and Bruce Banner. Bruce Banner's relationship with Hulk is very tenuous right now. Like, I have a feeling that it's going to be a kind of struggle between the two as they move forward getting back into the Avengers. And Mar and Bruce Banner also lost two entire years of his life. This is just talking about the Marvel movies. We could go even further into all the TV shows, but just talking about the Marvel movies, I really feel that there's plenty of loss to go around that is significant and permanent for these characters and for this universe. So recently Tom Holland did an Instagram story where he was unboxing something sent to him by Mark Ruffalo. And as he pulls it out, you see that it's actually a poster uh, for Avengers Infinity War. You see it's the A with the, with the uh, Infinity War uh, with the Infinity War logo. So it's pretty tame, but then he pulls out the letter that he's supposed to read. And he's reading, as he's reading the letter, on the back of it, it says in big letters from Marvel Studios, confidential, do not share. So then he finally finishes reading the letter from Mark Ruffalo and he turns it around, loses his shit, cuts off, cuts off the live stream. I'm like 99% certain that this was a joke on Tom Holland's part and I think and I think it was really funny, especially since it was Tom Holland who was doing it, receiving a gift, f receiving a gift from Mark Ruffalo, who are the two like big spoiler threats for Marvel with Tom Holland just has a big mouth and can't keep a secret and then Mark Ruffalo uh, nearly like live streaming the entire movie of Thor Ragnarok. 
it was, it was just a really funny video, and it also kind of brings up something that I really enjoy about the Marvel Cinematic Universe, aside from the superhero movies and the TV shows, just the the cast and the production team, they really seem to enjoy doing it, they seem to really enjoy hanging out with each other, and they keep doing things like this that are just really funny. For Captain America Civil War, Chris Evans and Robert Downey Jr. did that little video bit about fighting over the donuts, that was, again, just a really funny bit that they just filmed, like, backstage at a press junket and put it up. And it's just, it's little things like this that I just really enjoy seeing. They really do feel like a family. And with Infinity War coming up, it's it's going to be sad when some of those, some of the characters are no longer a part of the family because we do know that Infinity War is going to be like the end of some of these characters' stories. We don't know who, but uh, it, it it's, it's, it's exciting it's it's exciting and it's also heartbreaking because you know not only are they just this family of avengers on screen they're they've become this family behind the behind the scenes and i really appreciate that even when like one of one of oh god when avengers came out i forget who it was was telling a story that uh like in just in the middle of the week just randomly one night chris evans sent a text to chris hemsworth Mark Ruffalo and Robert Downey Jr. that just said, assemble. Basically just Captain America assembling the Avengers. It was just, it, it, it's really fun stuff like that that I really love seeing from this cast and from this product and from this production. It's, it's just so much fun between them, and I love it. Recently, John Bernthal did an interview about his time playing the Punisher. He mentioned that it is up in the air whether he'll be returning as, as the Punisher in another Netflix, in either a Defenders Netflix series or another Heroes Netflix series, or his own second season of The Punisher Show. In the interview, he also talked about his actual fear of playing the Punisher. He mentions that he enjoys playing roles that actually frighten him and actually gets him into the character, and the Punisher was a character he could, on just a very very basic level relate with in the fact that the Punisher lost his family and John Bernthal feels very strongly for his own family and kind of and kind of considers the implications of what would happen if he were to lose his family. He also says that joining the trend of playing a Marvel superhero was never something that was on his radar until he was given the role as the Punisher because he's not so much a superhero. He's not super. He's also not a hero. He's a very he's a very skilled military man, but he's he is not heroic in any way, and he enjoys playing that character. There's nothing to really like about him. He's not a likable character. He's almost borderline a villain. And he says he really appreciates the the kind of danger of that character, that this character is essentially a murderer. But the motivations he has behind his murders of protecting those he cares about is something that he relates with really well. I really hope Bernthal does come back as a Punisher. He says he's excited to do so, but nothing but right now nothing is set in stone whether he'll return as the Punisher. I really hope he does, because he was, in my opinion, the perfect casting for the Punisher and he knocked the series, he knocked both Daredevil season two and the Punisher series just out of the park for the character of Frank Castle. So finally at long last, we got our first teaser for Avengers Infinity War. Just watching the teaser alone, it didn't give a whole lot, uh, it didn't give a whole lot of looks into like what the story, what the story is, aside from this is Thanos with the Infinity Stones attacking, attacking Earth and the Avengers fighting back. But aside from that, it was just, a, it was, you know, like any other teaser, just a lot of out of context scenes and images. But it was so exciting and it's so awesome to see the Avengers getting back together after Civil War. And I just have a few initial reactions. First off, I just want to say, I think Thanos looks so badass. The three times we've seen him before, at the end of Avengers, in Guardians of the Galaxy, and at the end of Avengers Age of Ultron, I've never really liked the whole, like, blue helmet, shoulder pads. It looked just kind of, it looked really dorky. And I know that's exactly how he looks in the comics, but I just always thought it looked really dorky in, like, real life on screen. So I'm so glad that they've kind of changed that, where he still has the blue, like, breastplate, but it looks like, like, the pants he's wearing, they aren't, they really aren't that flashy. It's sleeveless. He almost looks like this kind of badass country guy who's just here to kick your ass. And I like that. I like the simplicity of his look because it, it's very simple. There's nothing, you know, he's, he doesn't have like a big, a big scythe and it looks really scary. He just looks like he's going to beat the crap out of you. And that's, that looks like that's what he's going to be doing in the movie. I like the simplicity of it. A lot of people are making a lot of jokes about it, which of course they are because that's the internet. But I really like the simplicity of how Thanos looks right now. 
Also, Vision looks human. We see him in a scene with Scarlet Witch, which it looks like they are going forward with that kind of romantic story arc. But in that brief moment, he looks human. He looks like normal Paul Bettany. I think that's actually kind of cool. As much as I like seeing, as much as I like seeing, you know, these actors, you know, in the makeup as a costume, I also like seeing them just kind of, you know, dressed down, look like themselves. But he still has, at least in this scene, he still has the Infinity Stone, the Mind Stone, right here in the middle of his forehead. We also see Captain America with a beard, and you know, you do realize that this is probably the first time Captain America has ever grown a beard. He was what? He, he was like between 20 and 25 in the first Avenger, and, and before he bulked up into Captain America, you know that dude was hairless. He was basically an otter. And then when he became Captain America, he was from then on just very military, so he didn't have any facial hair, he never grew a beard. So you know in the 100 years that he's been alive, or just the 30 that he's been awake, this is the first time he's had a beard. So I have a feeling it's going to get to the point where he's like, what, Cap, you're going to shave your beard? And he's like, yeah, yeah, I guess so. And he's going to get really sad because now he's not going to have a beard. But I think the beard looks really awesome. Obviously, I like bearded characters. They look really awesome. Fortunately, we do have Black Panther coming up in February. And then I believe Ant-Man in fall before Avengers Infinity War comes out in May. So those are just my first, like, really brief initial reactions to the movie. If you want to see a more in-depth look at the trailer, check back Wednesday when I give out a full trailer analysis for Avengers Infinity War. planning your next Wizard World experience, make sure you to use the discount code GUILLOTINEGEEK online and get 10% off your ticket purchase and use those savings to buy some merch or meet a celebrity. What did you think about these weekly Marvels and were there any other Marvel news that you'd like to talk about? Let me know in the comments and follow me on all the internets. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and share it around so others can join in the conversation. If you'd like to ask a question for this month's Q and Trey, leave them in the comments or on any of my social media. And subscribe to my channel to geek out some more. Thanks for watching and have fun. Hold on, if we don't play that back, I'm canceling the press tour.